Hello and welcome to the Power Electronic and Renewable Energy Lecture. Today we are going to design the off-grid solar system or standalone PV system. As we know, there are three types of PV system. Grid connected PV system, off-grid PV system, and hybrid PV system. This figure shows the essential component of a standalone PV system or of grid PV system. We have the PV solar array, charge controller, DC circuit breaker, battery bank, DC to AC inverter, AC circuit breaker, and finally the load. For sizing the off grid PV system, we have five steps. The first step will be the load analysis. And the second step is the PV panel sizing. And the third step is the inverter sizing. And the fourth step is the battery bank sizing. And the final step is the solar charge control sizing. We will be going through this step by step to ensure that the system meets the energy needed of the intended application. The load analysis is the first step in sizing an off-grid PV system. And the aim of the load analysis is to determine the total amount of energy required in the day. The following table presents the power consumption for a medium-sized apartment with two bedrooms a living room and a kitchen. This table provides a general idea of the power consumption distribution in a medium sized apartment. From the table, the total power equal to 1097 and the total daily energy consumption equal to 7.8 kilowatt hour per day. Once you have completed the load analysis, the next step is to determine the suitable capacity of the PV panels required to generate the sufficient energy. To do that, first you need to know where you want to install the system and the average sun peak hour per day you have in your area. The sunlight availability affects how much energy your solar panel generate. And this map display the global horizontal irradiation levels. In the most part of my country, Sudan, the sun peak hour per day equal to six kilowatt hour per square meter, as shown in the map. And the total PV array power given by this formula. Total daily energy 7.8 and sun peak hour equal to 6. Then the total PV array power equal to 1.3 kilowatt. To avoid the undersizing of the system, we have to add 20% as a loss. Then the PV array power equal to 1.56 kilowatt. Once the PV array power has been calculated, the next step is to determine the number of solar PV panel needed to produce the power. In my case, I will use Genco PV panel 400 watt and the specification of this panel are the power rating 400 watt, the peak efficiency 19.88, the IMPP current 9.96 ampere, the voltage VMPP 40.16 volt, the ISO circuit 10.61 ampere, the V open circuit 49.1 volt. 
the number of panel equal to PV array power divided by PV panel power rating equal to 3.9 approximately equal to 4 panel. And the four panel are capable for producing 1.6 kilowatt. Step three, inverter sizing. The inverter is a critical component that converts the DC generated by the PV panel into the AC that can be handled the peak load. To consider the third power, every device have a motor is multiplied by three, while the remaining component are multiplied by 1.3. We are going to use the previous uh, table that we used in the load analysis. Then the total power will be 3.65 kilowatt. The suitable inverter rating for this system is 4 kilowatt. The 4 kilowatt must hyper solar inverter was selected in this case and this table presents the specification of this inverter the power rating is 4 kilowatt the search power equal to 12 kilovolt ampere the maximum efficiency is up to 98 the operating frequency is 50 hertz and 60 hertz two option the normal battery system have two options, 24 volt or 48 volt. And the maximum charge current for 24 is equal to 80 ampere, for 48 equal to 60 ampere. And the uh, MPP range, the operated uh, DC voltage, it ranged from uh, 24 system from 32 to 145 voltage. For the 48 system, it's ranged from uh, 64 to 145 voltage. And the maximum PV array power open circuit voltage equal to 145 volt. This is a PV array configuration. The nominal current equal to 19.92 ampere, and the operating voltage equal to 80.32 volt. The DC operating voltage falling within the range of 64 to 145 voltage which is compatible with our selected inverter. Step 4. Sizing a battery bank. The battery stored additional solar energy during sunny period for using it to the night or in the cloudy days. So for sizing the battery bank, you need five factors. The total energy, and the number of days you need to store the energy for, and the system efficiency. And uh, number four, you need the DOD, or deep of charging of the battery, as shown in this figure. The lifetime of the battery depending on the DOD. And number five, you need uh, the system voltage which will be selected depending on the load energy as present in these figures. The required battery capacity equal to 382.2 ampere. Then the number of battery in parallel, this one calculated by this formula, battery capacity divided by battery rating, which is equal to 1.9 approximately, equal to two batteries. And then the number of battery in series, 
calculate by this formula DC voltage of the system divided by the voltage rating of the battery. The DC voltage equal to 48 divided by 12, which equal to 4. The battery bank configuration. The number of batteries needed are 8 batteries, 2 parallel, and 4 in series. And the configuration of the batteries shows in these figures. Step 5. Sizing of a solar charge controller. A solar charge controller regulates the flow of energy from the PV panel to the battery bank. It prevents overcharging and ensures the efficient charging. Sizing of the charger controller can be obtained by multiplying the short circuit current of the modules connected in parallel by the safety factor. And our uh, show circuit current in this module equal to 10.61. This one can be 25.5 ampere. The charge current equal to 25.5 ampere. So this ICC rated is less than charge current of 60 amp specified for our selected inverter. Okay, now let's build our off-grid system. So we have solar panel array. This convert the solar energy to electrical energy. The solar array connected to the hybrid inverter through DC circuit breaker. And then the hybrid inverter connected to the battery bank to charge the battery bank. And the battery bank connected back to the inverter. And finally, the inverter connected to the load through AC circuit breaker to convert the DC power to AC1. That is all for today. Thank you for your attention. In the next video, we are going to design the on-grid PV solar.